Hello everybody and welcome back to our IELTS lessons. Today we'll focus on IELTS writing and we'll talk about what to expect in IELTS writing exam and I'll also tell you how to prepare for it and then we'll also talk about some common tasks and then I'll also be giving you some tips how to do well on IELTS writing. So let's get going. Let's now talk about what to expect in the IELTS writing test. It will be one hour test, so 60 minutes in total, and then there'll be two tasks given to you. Task one, 20 minutes, and task two is for 40 minutes. There won't be clear distinction. You can take longer time on one or the other, but I'll suggest you do not spend more time on IELTS writing task one, because there are more marks for IELTS writing 2. In IELTS writing task 1, you will be asked to write 150 words at least, whereas in task 2, you will be writing at least 250 words. So obviously, there are more marks for that, its value is higher, so you should spend more time on IELTS writing task 2. So in IELTS writing task 1, you will be given a visual information. It can be a pie chart, a graph, a table, a map, or a flow chart. So it will be a visual information. You have to convert that into words, into sentences. But it's not as simple as that. How effectively we need to do it, we'll talk about that. And in IELTS writing task 2, you'll be asked to write an essay to uh, in response to a question now in response to a question means there will be a statement followed by a question so you have to answer that question in an essay format so as you know essay format is um, what is essay format i mean you have to write introduction then body then conclusion without giving any headings we do not give headings in an essay so this is how the task IELTS writing task would look like. Let's talk about how to prepare for the IELTS writing test. Familiarize yourself with different question types and their requirements. There are different types of questions and each could require different approaches to write. So learn about them, know them and practice on each one of them because how you are going to write your introduction thesis statement, your body paragraph, depends on the type of questions you are given. So learn about them and practice writing for all of them. Developing a solid understanding of grammar, vocabulary, and sentence structure. So now, as you know, IELTS is the taste of your English. So you really need to know sufficient English to score higher on, on this exam. So you need to understand grammar, learn grammar books, watch videos. I've also made a number of uh, videos on grammar, on tenses to watch them and learn about them. Develop your vocabulary by collecting your words on regular basis, read more, and also look at the meaning of those words and also look at their pronunciation because that's going to help you in your um, speaking taste and also your reading will improve if you have sufficient number of words. So you need to have rich vocabulary and also sentence structure. There are different types of sentence structure, simple sentence, compound sentence that we uh, make by adding and, or, nor, for, or complex sentences which are formed by using words such as before, after although so learn about them see how they are used learn their punctuation as well because it's a grammar test so there isn't any minor or major mistakes mistakes is a mistake so you can avoid them by getting a good command over grammar vocabulary and sentence structure practicing writing tasks under timed conditions to improve speed and accuracy one hour isn't sufficient enough. I mean, it can be sufficient enough if you have practiced well already. Otherwise, that time passes very quickly. So you have to practice under strict time conditions. You have to see if you can produce good writer, good essay within 40 minutes, or you can do task one 
in 20 minutes. So you have to practice under timed conditions. And seeking feedback from teachers or native English speakers these days, uh, AI can also give you feedback, but also if you can find a good teacher who can give you customized feedback, I mean feedback according to the mistakes that you are making, that's going to be even more effective. So practice as much as you can, seek feedback, guidance from the teacher or AI. I mean they are writing, checking tools also, they can also be helpful for you but then a good teacher can give you a proper direction. So try both and see what works for you. Let's now talk about what are common IELTS writing tasks. If you are giving IELTS academic, then your task one will be describing and analyzing graphs, charts and tables. So you'll be provided a visual information. As I said earlier, it can be a line graph, bar graph, pie chart or can be a map can be a flow chart you'll convert that that figure that visual information into sentences you'll be giving its a summary uh, and you'll also be describing key features main features of the graph or the picture that you are provided but you won't be writing every bit of it because you won't have sufficient time you will be only writing 150 words so choose wisely what to write and what to avoid writing and if you are doing general trailing IELTS, then you'll be asked to write a formal letter or emails to express opinions or make requests. Sometimes there can be semi-formal letters as well. If you, uh, if you could be asked to write a letter to a friend. So you have to choose wisely what kind of language you should use, how to start uh, a letter and how to end the letter. So you need to understand the difference between formal English and semi-formal English. So that will be your IELTS writing task one, uh, general training. And then task two will be writing an essay for both for general training and for academic training. You'll be asked to compose an essay which will be discussing advantages and disadvantages or causes and effects or providing solution to a problem. So these are main types of essays. So you must get uh, questions and start practicing on them because on the test day you'll be more confident if you have already practiced for all um, each one of them. So as I promised earlier I'll be providing you some tips for getting a good score in IELTS writing. So here they are. Understanding the question prompt thoroughly before writing is absolutely crucial that you understand the question well. I remember in one of my IELTS exam, uh, there was a task, uh, we had to compare physical health and mental health, but I misunderstood as physical health and wealth. I just look at the question and start composing my outline so of course I did very bad on the test but I learned that lesson that we have to be very careful when it comes to reading the question. Do not take it lightly, read very carefully what the question says and understand it thoroughly before writing. Organizing thoughts and creating a clear structure for the response. So if you think that you'll be writing and organizing that will result in very poor write-up. So good write-up is the one which finishes before it starts. That means its entire skeleton should already be composed and then actually start writing on the sheet and also compose the sentence in your mind already before writing it. Because you know our mind works sometimes very faster, faster than we can write. So there could be more thoughts coming and then that might hinder in your flow. So compose the sentence well in your mind and then transfer that on to the paper. Using a range of vocabulary and grammar structure effectively. And as I said earlier, there are different types of sentences. So you need to show that you can write in different types of sentences. You can write in simple sentence, compound sentence, uh, complex sentence, conditional sentences. So you have to show, you have to demonstrate that you are aware about all of these structures and you can write them well. And also vocabulary because it's the taste of your 
English language, so you need to have rich vocabulary. So one of the formula is avoid repeating words, use synonyms. Don't write one word more than three times or uh, more than four times, use synonyms. So increase your vocabulary because that will boost your score. They'll get you a good band. Avoiding common errors and proofreading for accuracy. It's absolutely necessary that after you finish writing, you must proofread what you have written. You can check for your spelling mistakes, punctuation mistakes, capitalization mistakes, or you could have forgotten to put full stop because these mistakes do matter. You can avoid just by developing the habit of proofreading. So must read at the end before submitting the final draft. So proofreading is really important. And finally, emphasizing coherence, cohesion and clarity in writing. You must make sure that your sentences are linked together. They are organized well. So sometimes what happens, the sentences are clear in our mind. But when it comes to writing, there isn't connection, there isn't sufficient connection established. So you have to make sure there is connection between sentences and among sentences. It looks coherent as a whole. So use connecting words, connecting devices. However, therefore, as a result, uh, for example, for instance, these are some of the connecting devices, but you should collect more of these connecting devices. So learn how sentences can be linked together. So it should look coherent and cohesive. So these are some tips. Please apply them. And I hope they'll help you in uh, getting a better bad score in IELTS. Let's summarize what we have learned. IELTS writing task is based on one hour, 60 minutes in total. There'll be two tasks, task one and task two for IELTS academic. Task one will be describing a visual information, graph, pie chart, table, uh, line graph. So you'll have to convert that into sentences. And for general training, your task one will be writing a letter or an email. So learn these tasks well, practice well before writing. And task two will be writing an essay. So you have to write in a formal essay style. And then you have to learn how to start writing it. I mean, how to compose good effective introduction, then body paragraph, and then concluding paragraph as well. You can do it effectively by learning about question types, which are advantages and disadvantages of something, or cause and effects of something, or problem and solution. So these are three major types. So get the questions. I'll also be providing some questions in the description box so you can practice writing them. And I hope by following these tips that I have provided you, you will get your desired bad score. Thank you everybody for watching this video. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like the video, subscribe my channel and you can follow me on my social media platforms. See you in another video. Take care and bye.